Welcome back everybody. As you can see, we're back at the front of the engine here. I have the big sockets out along with the three quarter inch ratchet again. We're gonna try and get this front nut off from the crankshaft here so that we can get that pulley pulled so that we can get the front cover off so we can start pulling gears and accessories out of there. So let's see if we can get this to break loose. Well, with the six foot cheater bar, we were able to get that broke loose. I am gonna have to get a stand built here, especially before we start reassembling. I know the, the motor was rocking back and forth there. Um, we'll just continue tearing it apart for now, but definitely during reassembly, we're gonna have stands built for multiple things. Over at the bench here, you can see that this is actually a two-piece deal. This is just a plate that they had a hex in, and you would find whichever holes fit best. And then your nut here, looks like it's got slots in there for turning the engine over. I think we'll end up making a new one of these. There's not a not a lot of material left on there. It's also got quite the bow to it. <clears throat> not a big deal. We'll make a new one. All right, guys. I got the puller set up, ready to pull here. Let's see what happens. Well, it turns out that other smaller puller just didn't have enough in it. So I switched to this one, figured it's worth a shot. And there it is. With all that out of the way, you can see how the crank is threaded for that big end nut. And then it's also a tapered seat that that pulley sits on as well as a key. So once that is set on that taper and that nut is run down them two other bolts that lock all that together keep this as a permanent fixture i do need that key out of my way and it appears to be a woodruff key Okay, with the key able to move, I just pounded that side back down. Just be able to take the brass drift now and hook underneath it and peel it out of there. And there's the key. Looks to be in good condition. The whole point of removing the key was just to not tear up this seal as we come through with the front cover. The pulley out of the way, we should be able to start pulling perimeter bolts all the way around here. So I'll get after it and bring you back. It's also worth noting we will have to pull four of the oil pan bolts to get this to slip out of here. Okay guys, just taking these bolts out. Uh, Kind of just want to bring up this point. I know we've been over the whole uh, spray and what to use, what not to use. I just want to prove just a small point. So we're going to leave this one unsprayed and we're going to spray this one. 
We're gonna do this all in one take here. And I'm gonna pull this one out first. Dry threads, a little rusty, but not bad. Now we'll pull this one. Weird. Dry threads. The only time you'll convince me that it actually makes a difference would be on these bolts down here where you actually have a nut on the back side and that bolt has to travel through that nut and you can spray on this end of it before it goes through there. Kind of like we did on the track tensioners. Otherwise, all you're doing is wasting your time and making everything just a wet mess. Just to hammer this point home for good, hopefully. We'll spray that one. We'll take the top one off first. Came apart with no issues. Bolt comes out. If it would focus here. Bolt is dry. Give me a second here to get the nut out. bolt still looks pretty dry the end is wet it didn't even penetrate with a nut that's my belief I know everyone is entitled to do whatever they feel works best for them I just don't see the need for it especially on this project when all the bolts come loose well on their own without any sort of a lubricant like I said, I will use it here and there. I know on the track adjusting nuts, it, was, it wasn't even optional at that point. If you tried to jam all that rust through that nut, you'd have nothing but problems. But on just taking these little bolts out, I'm sorry, I don't see the need for it. Okay, here's for everyone that said everything's been coming out so smooth. This is the last bolt holding the front cover on. It is down low here, right to the left of the pulley. And the 9 16ths spun on it. So I went to a 13 or 14 millimeter first, since that is just a hair smaller, I believe. And I pounded that one on there with a hammer. And that didn't work, it still spun. So I went to a 13 millimeter and that spun. So I went to a half inch since that is just slightly smaller and that spun. So since the bolt is shot, I am just gonna center punch it, drill the head out, get the front cover off, and then we will be able to extract the stud after everything else is past it. Alright, with that drilled out, come in with a short pry bar, pop off what's left, Get that washer out of there. You can see we're still protruding past the case there, which is good. Didn't get into that. With all the bolts out now, except for that, what's left of that one down there, we should be able to start working this off of here. It actually did pop when I drilled through that head. I heard the front cover move forward. But I see there are a few dowels we'll have to worry about getting it off from. Shouldn't be too bad.
with just a few hits of the hammer there, broke loose. I'm gonna save this mouse nest for later. I can stay in there for now. I think we are ready to slide it the rest of the way off. And you guys will get to see what's behind it before I will. All right, everyone, this is not what I was hoping to see in here. I knew we had a little up here from when we pulled that cover off. But when we pulled this cover here, it was looking really promising. I think that'll clean up, but I'm not going to guarantee it. We'll just have to see once we kind of get everything pulled apart and go from there. Someone's been in here before. That has been folded over at one time and then folded back flat and now this bottom one is folded over. Which means someone flattened this one out, had this apart, and then when they put it back together instead of putting this one back they chose the bottom one. Which means I may end up making a new tab otherwise maybe I could grab one of these. You know what guys, curiosity killed the cat. No need to be worried about timing. There's marks on everything here. God, that bearing is awfully snug on there, which is a good thing. Bearing looks excellent. Take you over to the bench here. Let's have a look at this gear. It surely does not look very good. I for sure see pitting right there on my fingernail. But I'm gonna run a wire wheel over this quick. Just kind of see how much of that cleans up. And I know we're not really getting into cleaning parts, but I do like to know what parts I need to be on the lookout for. And this one really has me questioning. I know we're still looking for undercarriage parts. We'll be looking for some other engine parts as well. I do have pistons, but we need to get rings and sleeves yet. We'll have to source gaskets, or at least a head gasket. We could probably make everything else. So, let's clean this up, see how it looks. Okay, I just spent about a minute or so just running that in between the teeth there and the heavy stuff cleaned up but there is a lot of pitting you can really see it in that one along with that one there so I think I'm probably going to be on the lookout for a new idler but if push comes to shove I feel this would probably survive obviously we'd have to clean it more thoroughly but I do think it would wear back in. I know I've run across some rear ends before, rear axles in cars and pickups that have sat and had rust on the ring gear. And if you run them down the road for 10, 20 miles, a lot of that pitting kind of gets worn back in. It's probably not the best practice, but you have to remember these parts are not available new anymore. So sometimes you have to work with what you have and with that being said this gear could be the same story but we get down here I really don't see much on this one there's just some very very light rust on the crank I am not too worried about that one I'm almost positive that will clean up well guys I'm out of time for tonight so I think that's going to wrap up the video here. Thanks to everyone who's been watching, following along. We still have more to do on this block. We still need to strip it down, make sure we have a good block to start with. I still need to dig this out. That shouldn't be too bad. There's plenty to get a hold of there. But stay tuned for more. Just a little bit of bonus footage for you guys and kind of a question for everyone. 
I have this car trailer in here. It's a 16 foot with a two foot beaver tail, so an 18 foot. But it was hit when they pushed snow and it bent all these channels up in here. It bent the uh, coupler, the jack is bent on it. I have new channel here. I have a new coupler. I have a new jack. We also need to do wheel bearings and brakes. And I figure if we're going this far with it, we might as well blast it and repaint it. So let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing. Otherwise, I can kind of keep that off camera too.